Hey everybody, uh, Sebastian Maniak uh, here again. I'm kind of excited HashiCorp came out with some new cool boundary feature and uh, kind of wanted to update my lab and uh, show it off and uh, see how it actually works and hopefully you get to play around with it. Um, the link to the repo will be below right after this broadcast um, and all the information to set this up. So really kind of let's take a look. So HashiCorp, or the Hashi Conference is right now, and they've announced um, Boundary with Embedded Terminal, LDAP support, and more. Um, what I'm curious, what I'm curious about, is how this Embedded Terminal works. Um, so I wanted to give it a try. So what I do have here is I have this simple um, lab, <clears throat> and this lab uh, allows you to deploy HCP Boundary. So deploy the free version or the enterprise version in the cloud and builds a little home network environment for me or for you to play around with. So builds Vault, builds a local worker, builds a, a Kubernetes cluster, Postgres database, and a Linux server that we're injecting SSH credentials into. So let's jump into the code and I'm going to show you how this works. So the repo itself has a sub bunch of code in here, has some configuration, <clears throat> and the steps are pretty simple. Uh, what we're going to do is we want to make sure that we have kind installed on our machine and we have Docker installed. Those are the two things um, that I'm working with today. So first thing we need to do is we have to log into our HCP cloud. So if I go to my Chrome browser, in here, um, I can go to my HCP crowd. I have nothing built, I have it deployed. Um, there's really nothing in there. What I have is two workers that are automatically deployed with HCP. What I wanna do is I wanna copy this IP address <clears throat> or this uh, domain name in here. And I'm going to paste that into my configuration um, because I need to ensure that when my worker goes online, it's deployed. So I'm gonna go into my config, boundary config, and I'm gonna update this to my worker itself. Uh, once I save the file, perfect. Um, the next steps what we wanna do is do Docker Compose. So Docker Compose, if we take a look at it, is really gonna build out those um, the things that we want. We want an HCP worker that's going to execute this configuration. We want HashiCorp Vault to store our credentials and be that credential broker. Um, we want an open SSH server so we can test this out. Uh, a Postgres server um, itself so we can kind of play around with the device itself. So in here, I'm going to do Docker Compose up. And um, what we'll see is as this is running here in the background, it's gonna start spinning up my Docker instances. So downloading the images. <clears throat> it's gonna deploy the Boundary HCP worker with the latest 0 0.14 image. Once we've logged into the worker, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to export this worker token. So then we can authenticate our worker to our HCP boundary. Perfect, so let's take a look at our Docker in here, so excellent. So we have our Postgres, OpenSSH server, Vault, and Boundary all deployed. We're gonna log into the Boundary HCP worker. We're gonna scroll up. We're gonna look for this worker authentication registration request. We're gonna copy that. We're gonna go back into our terminal and we're going to export worker token equals, we're gonna paste that in. 
then we're going to get the IP, the uh, URL of our boundary address. So that is just the, the actual URL you registered. So I'm going to paste that in. Next we want to do is authenticate. So we launch boundary authenticate. And when you spin up HCP, you, you'd set yourself up with that credential. So we're going to put in my credentials. So I was authenticated now, and now I have to execute the next command to create my or generate my worker authentication token. So my HCP worker on my on-prem device can talk to the HCP worker in uh, HashiCorp Boundary Cloud, I guess. Paste that in there. Perfect. So now that was deployed. Um, and if we take a look at uh, our Chrome here, we'll refresh the page. We can see perfect. Our boundary worker was actually deployed in here with a tag of Docker lab. So every target that we build or organization that we build or every anything that we build, we want to add that tag. So HCP boundary knows how to, um, to use the specific worker that is required. So once we've done that, I've developed a subset of just scripts, nothing too difficult uh, to make our lives easier um, in here where the first thing we want to do is I've developed this for home lab use so you can kind of deploy it and clean it up. Um, so I've put in my own local IP address of my MacBook in here to start the process. And simply what we do is just type start. And as this gets processed, what's going to happen is um, Kind is going to create our Kubernetes cluster for one of our targets. I'm going to go to the deploy.sh config to kind of walk you through it. So minimize this. So it's going to deploy or set up our Kind server. We're going to deploy our vault cluster in here. We're going to speci specify, sp we're going to, well, initiate vault. Uh, we're going to create specific vault accounts, create admin credentials, create Kubernetes credentials. We're going to deploy specific vault policies that are required for Kubernetes and for boundary. Then we're going to create tokens for our Kubernetes credential store, our server store, our database store. <clears throat> then we're going to build the organization within boundary. Then we're going to build the projects the databases, the Kubernetes. Then we're going to create our credential vault store and our credential libraries when we specify the path where the secrets are inside a vault, for example, here. <clears throat> um, as you can see, the script is kind of going and ex executing those commands. And now it finished. Um, then we're going to deploy the target. So a Linux target, SSH target, <clears throat> um, Kubernetes target, etc. So now when we log into our back into our Chrome device, uh, we can go to our organizations and we've built the new Docker org. And this Docker org is uh, just contains really three projects, the server project um, that has a Linux server that's injecting SSH and just a standard TCP um, that's brokering uh, well, it doesn't actually have a broker, so it's just a basic TCP session to connect to that device. Uh, a Linux server with uh, injecting application credentials. So we're actually injecting the credentials that are stored in this vault path. Uh, the database, so Postgres database, um, that's grabbing the uh, credentials to our database from vault. So we have a brokering. So it's brokering the connections to this vault path. And a Kubernetes environment where we have our Kubernetes server, um, where we're also doing credential injection and secret injection uh, to be able to execute some commands. But what I really wanted to take a look at is this terminal thing. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to add, uh, we're going to connect to boundary using the boundary desktop UI. Um, so that's an application. Uh, 
and uh, let's uh, log that in right here. Boundary, boundary, perfect. Um, there we go. So this is the boundary UI in here. Uh, let me just shrink this to make it look nice. Perfect. And this is the desktop application where I can authenticate to it and I'm authenticated as my user. Um, I'm just going to log into my Docker lab. So I got disconnected, let's reconnect again. So in here, I'm gonna type in my URL for my HCP cluster. I'm gonna log in. And now I've logged in because I have access to these targets. I can then connect to whatever I want. <clears throat> so uh, if I want to connect to the Kubernetes cluster, so this is version 014, the latest one, um, we can click on connect. And what happened was Vault and, or Boundary requested the credentials from Vault. And these credentials were then either the cred the secret life or the cred certs were generated for us or a service account was automatically deployed for us for the use um, and allows us to kind of SSH or connect to those devices. So this looks new where before we just had an address and IP. Now we can actually copy an SSH config that we can get into it. And then it looks like we have a terminal session that's using my own um, terminal. So it's just using the terminal session within my browser, within my Mac, I guess, um, that it's spitting out some color errors that's probably not supported. And then allows me to really do whatever I want in here itself. So now let's take a look at the Linux server that is using SSH credentials. So let's connect to this Linux server. Um, and what I really want to do is just right into the shell and see if it works. All right, perfect. There you go. It's pretty simple. So what happened was it just executed that SSH command and injected the SSH cert and the credentials and allowed me to can log right into the server. That's cool. Exit and we close. If I get back in, will it reconnect? Nope, I have to end my session and connect again. <clears throat> I like the more detail they have here now about the the target, um, what kind of, that it's using SSH injection, the IP address of it. Um, I like this uh, new layout and I love having the terminal to quickly access things here. Awesome. Perfect, so that was uh, pretty much it. I'm gonna have the uh, repo inside of um, inside of the YouTube channel, or you can just go to my github.com slash Maniac Academy. It's just called Boundary HCP Docker Lab. Um, and all the steps are located here that will allow you to deploy the same thing on your Mac um, and be able to test this out. Um, awesome. Thanks for joining.